What do you think of when I say fast food restaurant? You might think of places like McDonald's, Subway, or Starbucks. Those are restaurants you can go to when you're in a hurry. Now, what if I told you fast food restaurants existed 2,000 years ago? It's true. Archaeologists have uncovered them in the ancient Roman city of Pompeii. And just like people today, ancient Romans loved going out for a quick bite to eat. Now, you might have heard of Pompeii before. It's an ancient city in Italy, and in 79 CE, it and a nearby town called Herculaneum were completely covered in rock and ash. That was the year a giant volcano exploded, sending tons of black smoke and rocks up into the air. For years, Pompeii was forgotten under the ash, but in the 1700s, people started digging into the ground to uncover the lost city, and what they found amazed them. The ash had preserved buildings, objects, and even food. It was almost like the city had frozen in time. Archaeologists are constantly making new discoveries at Pompeii, discoveries that tell us more and more about everyday life of ancient Rome. Today we're going to learn about one of the most recent discoveries. A few years ago, archaeologists uncovered a fast food restaurant called a Thermopolium, and it's given us so many clues about daily life 2,000 years ago. This is the story of Pompeii and its ancient snack bar. Historians, welcome to another episode of Anytime Now. I'm Brooke, co-founder of Honest History. Most of you may think of fast food as a modern day invention where you pull up in a car, order, and drive away within a few minutes. But the concept of eating quickly is nothing new. In this episode, we're going to take a fascinating and delicious journey into the past to visit the site of an early fast food restaurant in a city that was destroyed by a volcanic eruption. Not only does this story give us a look of what eating habits looked like in ancient Pompeii, but it also gives us so many other insights into life from that period. In many ways, it's not much different than how we live today. And in other ways, it's a completely different world. Let's get started. Our story begins in August 23rd, 79 CE, in the ancient city of Pompeii. It was a bright summer morning, and as usual, the people of Pompeii were out and about. Many of them were walking to work, were picking up food from the public market. They strolled by busy food stalls that were selling local wine, barley, grapes, olives, walnuts, and dates. You could see builders busy at work, repairing damaged buildings. There had been a huge earthquake years ago, and they were still fixing the damage it caused. In the market, people chatted with each other about the week. Many of them were discussing the recent tremors they had felt. It was strange to feel the earth shake, but they weren't too concerned. It happened all the time. They looked up at the huge mountain in the distance, Mount Vesuvius. This volcano is the reason why Pompeii had so much fertile land around. Its rich volcanic soil was perfect for growing food. The city had everything the people could want. There was a sports ground to watch and play games. There was a theater to see performances, a gym with a swimming pool for exercise, and there were many temples to the gods and goddesses. There were also plenty of places to eat. To get a quick snack, workers stopped by the Thermopolium. These snack bars had a variety of foods to choose from. Duck, goat, pig, fish, and even snails were kept warm in their earthen jars. People could also get cheese, lentils, nuts, and spiced wine. Many Romans loved to add some ancient ketchup to their meal. Can you guess what this sauce was made of? I'll give you a hint. It wasn't anything like ketchup you know today. Ancient Roman ketchup was made of fish guts. 
After choosing their snack, the workers could eat there or take it to go, just like fast food restaurants today. In the afternoon, it was time to relax. Many people left work and went to the public baths. These baths were located inside beautifully decorated buildings where people could soak in cool or warm pools of water. At the baths, they talked with friends, played games, read, ate, and washed. After the baths, everyone went back to their homes. For many Romans, this meant returning to their small apartments. Then they had a light dinner and finally got off to bed. They had no idea. In a few hours, everything was about to change. The next morning, the people of Pompeii <sighs> woke up and saw something strange. Just above Mount Vesuvius, there was a white cloud in the shape of a pine tree. They wondered what this could be. For the past four days, they had felt tremors. Did this cloud have anything to do with that? Many continued their day as normal. They walked to work and visited the public market. This time, people chatted to each other about the strange cloud. Little did they know, it wasn't just any cloud. It was a cloud of gas and ash. It was a sign that Mount Vesuvius was about to blow. Around one in the afternoon, the city began to shake. A cloud of dark ash shot up from Mount Vesuvius and into the sky. The people of Pompeii began to panic. Should they take cover in their homes or try to escape the city? Ash and a type of rock called pumice began to fall from the sky, and this pumice was burning hot. Many people locked themselves inside of their homes, hoping they'd be safe. Some decided to escape on foot, marching away from the city. We have only one written account of this tragic day, and it comes from a man named Pliny the Younger. Pliny lived in a town across the bay from Pompeii. From afar, he watched as the volcano blasted ash, dirt, and smoke into the air. Ashes were already falling, not as yet very thickly. I looked around. A dense black cloud was coming up behind us, spreading over the earth like a flood. Pliny remembered. By 5 p.m., the ash had completely darkened the sky. Buildings began to collapse under the weight of the rocks and ash. And now, even larger rocks began to smash into the city. Many people ran into the harbor to escape. Maybe they could get on a boat and sail away to safety. Volcanic lightning streaked across the sky and waves crashed violently against the docks. The sea was too dangerous. They would never survive. They were trapped. And at one in the morning, the huge cloud of ash and rock collapsed. A hot wave of rock and gas surged towards Pompeii. Over the next six hours, four more waves of rock and gas rushed towards the city. By 8 a.m., Pompeii was completely covered. The people, animals, and buildings were buried under 82 feet of ash and rock. Meanwhile, people in nearby towns prayed that they would be able to see the sun again. At last, this dreadful darkness was dissipated by degrees like a cloud or smoke. The real day has returned, and even the sun shone out. Pliny remembered. But when the sky cleared, it was easy to see Pompeii was gone. And for over a thousand years, the city would remain buried far beneath the ground, forgotten for centuries. Hi, young historians. Time for a quick break from this amazing story to tell you a bit more about honest history. If you're enjoying this episode, then you'll love Honest History's magazines and books. Each one is filled with important adventures through the past, like the story of Cheng Yi Sao, a Chinese woman who commanded one of the largest pirate fleets in history, to Mansa Musa from Africa, one of the wealthiest people to ever live. You can pick up a copy or subscribe and receive three issues delivered straight to your doorstep every three months. Just go to honesthistory.co and use code anytime now for a 10% discount. That's honesthistory.co and special promo code anytime now. Okay, let's get back to the story.
Of course, there had always been some clues about Pompeii's past. The local people called the area La Civita, which means the city. It's almost as if people knew, somewhere beneath the ground, there had once been a bustling city. But it took over 1,700 years to prove it. One fateful day in 1748, a group of explorers went hunting for lost treasures. People had uncovered some ruins nearby, and they thought it was a good place to find ancient artifacts. What they found was even more exciting. Digging into the ground, the explorers uncovered an ancient amphitheater. Could this be part of the lost city of Pompeii? They continued to explore the site looking for clues. Fifteen years later, explorers found an inscription with the city's name in Latin. The inscription read, Re Publici Pompanorum. This confirmed it. They had found Pompeii. Over the next hundred years, archaeologists dug into the ash and dirt to uncover the forgotten city, and what they found took them by surprise. They had never seen anything like it. Buildings, objects, and even food had been perfectly preserved. In 1863, one Italian archaeologist stumbled upon something truly shocking. Human bones and strange human-shaped spaces in the ash. He realized that these were the remains of the people of Pompeii. It's almost as if the ash had frozen the city and people in time. Pompeii has now been excavated for over two centuries. Since 1748, we've uncovered many incredible things. We have found grand villas that were once houses of the wealthy. Their walls are still decorated with dazzling paintings. We've discovered a local laundrette where everyday Romans wash their clothes. We've dug up the remains of food that shows us exactly what people ate. And we've uncovered some of the oldest public baths in the Roman Empire. One of the most recent finds has gotten archaeologists very excited. An ancient snack bar called a Thermopolium. The snack bar was first discovered in 2019, but it took years to fully uncover. Archaeologists had to work very carefully to make sure that they didn't damage the structure. And that means that they also had to work very slowly. Using special tools, they carefully picked away the rock and brushed away the dirt. And when it was finally uncovered, they couldn't believe their eyes. They've uncovered snack bars before, but none quite like this. This thermopolium was decorated with stunning paintings. On the front, there was a figure of a nereid, an ancient sea nymph. She was painting riding a seahorse. And on the other side, there were bright yellow paintings of chickens, ducks, and other birds. Some historians think these paintings were used to show people what type of food they served, almost like a menu. Along the counter, there was a row of earthen jars. This is where the food was stored to keep it warm. The ancient snack bars served food that we consider healthy today. You wouldn't find any sugary cakes or fried foods. Instead, Romans ate cooked fish, meat, lentils, cheese, and fresh bread. This thermopolium had the remains of an interesting ancient stew. This stew was made of fish, sheep, and snails. Does this sound like something you'd like to eat? Archaeologists also found the bones of two people near the restaurant. One of these people was a 50-year-old man who appeared to be in bed when the volcano erupted. Today, we understand why these snack bars were so popular. Many ancient Romans lived in small apartments and didn't have kitchens of their own. They could stop by a thermopolium for a quick bite in the morning or before they went home. Sometimes there was even a place to eat in the back of the room, just like restaurants today. And now for some really good news. The famous snack bar is open to tourists. Visitors can come to Pompeii and see it with their very own eyes. It's just one of the many incredible structures the ancient people left behind. Since Pompeii was rediscovered, it has been a treasure trove for ancient history. In fact, it's the reason why we know so much about ancient Roman life today. With each new discovery, we seem to learn the same lesson. The ancient Romans weren't so different from us today. They went to work, 
bought food from the market, watched sports, hung out with their friends, and just like us, they like to get a quick bite to eat. Welcome back. Anyone else planning a trip to Pompeii after listening to this episode? Imagine what it must have been like to be ordering a quick bite to eat when Mount Vesuvius erupted. Thankfully, we have warning systems today in place with volcanoes that give us more time to escape an eruption. But next time you're in line to order a burger and fries, pretend you're in ancient Pompeii. What would you order? If this is your first time listening to our show, be sure to check out some of our previous episodes for more fascinating stories from history. And if you want to learn more about delicious history, check out History is Delicious, a book all about the history of cuisine and culture from around the world. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time. This episode was hosted by Zach Toscani and written by Heidi Coburn. Production was led by Randall Lawrence. To learn more about this episode, including more about the host, visit us at honesthistory.co and follow along for updates on social media at Honest History. When you think about history, are there lots of old guys wearing wigs and stockings? When you think about history, is Napoleon really short? And folks have wooden teeth. Do you know that history can be the most incredible, amazing stories for you and me? Sit back and listen to a story right now. It's honest, it's fun, and it's sure to. Ah!